Back in book one of Sailing Adrift, we completely refit our 1972 vintage sailboat in our driveway. And then we splashed it into the Columbia River. And guess what? It floats. So now we're gonna move aboard and live our lives on the water. Last week, after much anticipation, we got our diesel heater up and running. So we're no longer freezing our freaking butts off. But hey. The heat is on. <laughs> we got heat. Good morning, sunshine. We've got a special trip planned for the day. Today's the day. Yep, going out to calibrate the autopilot. Shouldn't take much effort. We just need to go out, do a 180 degree turn and come back. That's really all we have to do. So anything we do in addition to that is just for fun. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Still get nervous every time I fire this thing up. Well, should we untie? Yeah, can we untie? I'll jump on. Okay, here's the plan. We untie the back okay. and untie the front and then make sure we got a decent separation and this jump on, I think we'll be all right. Okay. All right, let's do it. Here we go, Kelly's our first time together, the two of us. Nice big throw over my head. It. Yes, you heard that right. This is our first little excursion with just the two of us. So far, we're quite the team at undocking. Thank you. Just wanna make sure everything looks good. Our pressure is good, everything seems fine. All right, climb aboard. scary part as we start our turn to exit out of the slip towards the channel. So far, so good. Our communication is spot on today. You're clear. Looks good. Looks good. Charge! No? Jesus. All clear. When we come out, that's why I need the depth. It gets pretty shallow, you gotta hug the right side. Wait, it's not for a while though. Wanna go faster? No. <laughs> you know what's funny is the view from the pilot house seems better than this. I believe it. Because of all the, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, there's a lot in the way. We started out at a very cautious three knots through the marina, and then we kicked it up to five. It's easier to steer now too. Yeah. Yeah, because you got more water going past the kill, so it's a lot more responsive on the rudder. 5.5 5 knots! Increase speed! Increasing speed! Captain! Seventeen's great. It's when it starts getting down to eight that uh, the problems start. Okay, so once we pass this piling, then what? Well, you just stick to the right. You'll see the markers. Will this thing yell at me if it gets too shallow? No. Oh. It'd be nice if it had like a shock collar feature and it could be a little sap. Yeah. That's what we need is a shock collar. Once we get out there, I kind of want to open it up a little bit and see what she can do. See if we can go like six miles per hour. At this rate, it'll take us like three hours to get to that uh, restaurant, which is our next step, right, Kelly? Tell us about our next step. Our next step is to go to Puffin Cafe. 
Cafe in Washington, Washington. Based on a speed of six knots, it'll take us two and a half hours to get there. And then we're gonna eat dinner or lunch or something. And then we are going to head back all in one day. I like, I figured the whole day should take about six hours. Assuming nothing goes wrong. Gotcha. Wanna go faster? Nope. <laughs> You're hugging all the driving. You can drive. Do it, would you like to drive? Yeah, I'll take over. Have the detached Vesper unit to check our depth and speed. There really wasn't much out on the river to be aware of today, just a few floaters. Look at the size of that log Kelly dodged. What do you want to do Kelly? Do you want to like practice anchoring or something? I just I want to get the, the autopilot thing done out of the way. You've already got it done. Done? It constantly learns, but all you're supposed to do the oh. first time is go and do a 180 degree turn, which you've pretty much almost done. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if you had to like hit a button when you started turning. No, it's supposed to always be learning unless you lock it. I feel like we're going so fast. We are going fast, Kelly. You wouldn't believe it. We're now speeding along 8. at 8.5 knots. knots. Go ahead and slow down. We were pushing the engine pretty good because I wanted to get to seven knots into the current to see if we could. Okay. Eight knots is ridiculous. Now we're just being ridiculous. We were. We were being a little ridiculous before. Going eight miles an hour in a boat. That's crazy. It, it, so there's a slight amount of anxiety for me in this situation because I'm allowing you to drive. And I... Only because I want to drive. You know, I, I want to pilot my boat. I get it. And you're piloting your boat. Yeah, yeah, by a lot, actually. We're going, look at that, we're at half throttle and going 7.6 knots. That's what the current will do for you. I eventually let Captain Chris take over. There really weren't many boats out, and we wanted to take full advantage of having no traffic to deal with by just playing around and getting a feel for things. We literally saw one boat the entire afternoon. I'm gonna flip around and we'll go back where there's nobody. Okay. Coming about, Kelly. We're gonna take his wake. Head on! Exciting times on the Columbia. I feel a lot better about this, this boat ride than our last one. Me too. Are you gonna crank it? Am I gonna crank it? Yeah. Sure. Coming about to the boat side. Of course, we also had to test out the inside helm. Everything seems to be going smooth down here, even better in terms of visibility because there's no boom in the way. Come on in. Okay. You feel comfortable, more comfortable driving the boat now, Kelly? I do. Good. Wanna drive it from inside? Chris then went up on deck to enjoy the view. Way quieter up here. A lot more peaceful. <laughs> Look at little Captain Kelly. Hi Captain Kelly, what are you doing in there? So you could drink coffee and sit in here in your underwear. Put the doors closed, of course. definition in those calves, Cal. Thanks. This, work out. Where, did you just leave that thing up there? Yeah. That thing Chris is referring to is our Vesper Cortex portable handset. Oh, okay. I'll go get it. Okay. Yeah, I got a little excited with everything going on and just sort of left it hanging out by the other helm on top of the pilot house. This was a trip that made us realize it could definitely use its own mount. It is always good if you're going to turn to, to announce it to everybody on the boat. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead and turn around. We'll watch your knots fly. Anybody coming? You're good. Coming about. 
Well, another successful outing. Got the autopilot calibrated, which was a whole lot easier than I expected. We also got a chance to maneuver a bit and play around with speeds. Now time to head back. And we're back, coming in a little hot. What? This is where I jumped off the boat to the dock and forgot to grab the deck line. Fortunately, at that point, our neighbor came over. You didn't grab the rope? No. <laughs> and now Chris is backing it up so we can try again. Take it all the way back. Give yourself as much room as you can. That worked. Now I have the deck line and I can tow Drifter in and tie us off. After we were secure, we had a quick team meeting discussing how that went and what we could do better next time. All in all, this was a great trip. Definitely successful and very rewarding in a lot of ways. Let's talk about our nav station, now that we've installed the finishing touches. So this is it, this is the nav station layout we're going with. We have two of these scan strut, uh, we actually have three of these scan strut bases and one phone based mount and one tablet based mount. These can be hot swapped to any of the three locations. This one is powered by DC power that can either go in this new outlet that we installed here on this side is a uh, socket and on this side is a cool powered USB plug. It has two traditional USB ports and in the middle a USB-C port. So that's pretty neat. Cool. First time I've seen an outlet like this. And uh, oh, if we elect to go into computer mode, you should probably jump over here. Okay. Up here is our navigation tablet so that we can see our chart plotter and all those fun things. But this can also go into computer mode where you take the mount off the ceiling, and you put it in back here. Ah. Now you have a little computer monitor, complete with mouse and keyboard. So you can either touch the screen if you need to, or use a interface device if it's too wet outside. Cool. Pretty nice little standing desk here. If we're in C mode, this will be the setup. We'll have either a cell phone or more likely one of these guys. These are our Cortex hand units, and we'll keep one of these at the helm. Either one of them can be fit into this. This one is the wireless one, but the wired one reaches no problem. Uh, and that will probably be the one that lives up here because you don't want to have to go back and charge it all the time. Plus, you might need to go to the back helm, which is what this one's designed to do. But these guys will sit here and tell us instrument data like depth and things like that with a quick glance and it's also our radio. So there it is. That yes. is the navigation. Oh, one thing to note, we also have one of these bases outside so we can go like this when we're piloting from the aft helm and mount this outside. Yeah, this that's thing, a very important thing. Yeah, this thing is completely waterproof and it's designed to be outside if need okay. be. So there you go. That's the setup. Pretty slick. I like it. That's it for this week. Tune in next week for our adventure on the Columbia to Puffin Cafe. Hey you, thanks for watching. If you like what you see and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. And special thanks to our patron crew, 
We really appreciate your support. Our boat looks so ugly when I just film it like this. Don't do that. Oh my god. I wonder what happened there. It's gonna take us about four hours to get there, two hours to eat, and then... Jesus! <laughs> Are you just making numbers up? Yeah. So here it is. Here I am, because I'm wearing gloves and it's really hard to turn off this camera. I didn't mean to do that. I'll fix that. It's now backwards, but we'll fix that. No deal, thing. We are globe trotters now, Kelly. We basically have sailed the world at this point.